All right, Jesse's here. <laughs> Yikes. Slam builds in Path of Exile. Uh, my pride and joy, my first love. I am of the belief at this point, after uh, some experience, that they're the worst archetype in the game, and I don't really even think it's close. Um, some time ago, I thought that that archetype was the Archmage mana archetype, but I think some of the support that that has gotten this league from Crucible has changed that. I have a video about that. It requires way too many points of investment in the tree to be good uh, or even decent. But other than that, it's pretty decent. I think slam builds are now have completely fallen off as being um, just the worst. Just the very, 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 very worst. Uh, just to give a little background, I league start slams almost every league I play. Uh, I've made two really off-meta meme janky crucible builds that both kind of fell flat but you know my safe build the build that i league started is my earth shatter berserker um earth shatter berserker used to be at one point uh, a very stable and reliable and consistent uh league start choice um and uh it hasn't made you know, Tie Tie Killer's league start list in a long time, nor should it, uh, because it's trash. And I love the slam builds. I love the style of it. I love the gameplay. If we go back to my little chart that I put together here, um, I, I, I think slam builds are kind of fun in a weird way. Like, oh, I'm cosplaying as a Diablo 2 Barbarian, you know, where you're yelling and then you're doing, you know, this big hit or something. I, I don't even know, but what I do know is that uh, slam builds should be given a little more something, a little more attention. Um, so let's talk about the cons. And some of this is coming from an SC trade perspective. I just today watched another YouTube video by Palstron. Uh, why are you poor in softcore trade? You know what? Uh, the actual reason you make no currency in Path of Exile through Pluto and Crucible. I will put this video in the description because I think he has an interesting take on this. Um, so let's let's talk about the slam cons and where we're at right now. Uh, it's slow. It's a slow slow build, slow class, slow archetype. You have to stop at every pack to kill it. You usually have to war cry once or even twice at every pack to kill it, even with rage support. Oh, look, I've got rage. Oh, look, 40 rage. Look at me. Still a slow, slow build. And it is not even close uh, to using rage as well as some of the other builds. There are builds that are using rage way better than war cries do. And I'm not just talking about this from the Berserker perspective. When I played Chieftain Tech Slam as my league start, even back before the Seismic Cry nerf, I still felt like that was a painfully slow leap slam slowly through the map build that is completely unrealistic for a modern SC trade player. Uh, and yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk more about that later, about SC trade specifically. But um, low damage, this is a problem that has persisted for the past few leagues. I know that Seismic Cry got nerfed, and maybe that nerf was warranted. The damage was, you know, being able to one-shot things was pretty crazy with Ice Crash, with whatever. But the reality is that um, slam builds, I don't even think they're on the map as far as damage. I think that if I got an incredible S-tier, amazing, godlike axe for this build, my axe is not very good, I still don't think that it would be, I think it would be, 2 million DPS and maybe like 3 or 4 million DPS with perfect war cry setup, right? And uh that's not that <laughs> if you look at some of the builds that are meta and some of the speed farming builds, that's actually bad. And right now I think I'm maybe at like a million, like a mil 5, right? That is not that is not damage that kills bosses. That is not really damage that clears like simulacrums or deli maps or anything. Any actual quote unquote difficult content. That is damage that can out can go T16s, which is what I'm doing. And 
this build is too slow to out and go T16s, you know, and make real money on it. Um, bad clear is another problem. Sorry, let me do this. Um, bad clear is a, this is a really, this is a, a tough one and a frustrating one for me in particular because AOE slams. So you imagine like an ice crash comes down and it blows up, boom. It doesn't actually clear packs a lot of the times. And even if you're using resolute technique like I am, it feels like I leave stragglers in my map all the time, all the time. It doesn't blow up the screen. The amount of AOE you have to invest in order to get these slam builds to blow up the screen is wild. It's insane. And it feels like when you compare it to a bow build, there is no comparison from a clear perspective. So bad clear, lots of buttons. Sorry, these two are kind of tied at the hip. Lots of buttons and optimized play, play requires more attention. Uh, yeah, slam builds are not easy builds. They're not, it's not righteous fire. It's not like some chaos dot build where you just click one button per pack and then you move on. Uh, it's not the case. You have to click buttons in order to do anything. Look at look at my bar down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's even fewer buttons than I had lastly. I think I had like 14. That's insane. That's completely unnecessary. That's like a, you know, whatever it is, MMO level of cooldown rotation. And like, yeah. And that, the if you, for SC trade, Softcore currency farming trade, it just, that, this alone, these two things alone, tank the stock of the Warcry Slammer build. Tank it. It was already a D tier build, but I think something about this league has me realizing that this isn't even on the map. It is an F minus archetype. Um, you know, ground slam, bleed, stuff like that, that used to be kind of meta. It's fallen out and it's been out of the meta for so long that I kind of wished that GGG would give it a little more support and a little more attention. Um, these last few, we'll just go through them all. No quality of life. You got no, you got no onslaught on kill. You got no phasing. You got none of the stuff that's just in your tree somewhere. There's not anything accessible that makes you move faster, that makes things a little zoomier and smoother and less painful. No, there's no quality of life. You just have to put in a ton of points in the Atlas tree, excuse me, in your skill tree, in order to make war cries even feel smooth. And I'm at the point where I have like, you know, level 93 character, full investment. Here I am running around my hideout, you know, with my flasks up or whatever. And to get, just to get to this is, I mean, you can't, it takes forever and so much investment just to get here. And so no quality of life. Where else are we at? Not, not as tanky as you'd expect. This is, this is a go-to. This is a favorite of mine. You would expect the bottom left of the tree to have better support for survivability. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. This is the second league in a row where I'm like, Spell suppression is just better. It's just better than max resistance. And it's not even close either. This is the other thing. I'm like, oh, but plus two max resistance is accessible from our point of the tree. That's so good. That's so strong. It's not. It's really not. Spell suppression, 100% spell suppression is way, way more valuable. And it's not even close. And you have to be on the other side of the tree to get it. Um, so excels at nothing. Thank you, Palestron, for that one. Warcry builds excel at nothing. So that's a little bit of a rant there. Now let's uh, let's switch gears. Let's look at Pee Wee Ninja. Pee Wee Ninja, I've already looked at this a little bit and I've already done a little study. This is the passive tree heat map. This is where the you know top, I don't know, whatever, 5% of all players in the game or something are, are spending their time. Uh, this is where the majority of players are right now. They're on the right side of the tree. Bow builds are very popular and meta. Um, and then spell builds generally up here. A lot of cluster jewel attention up in this part of the tree. You look down here, it's it's just a ghost town. There's nothing here. Even after some of these weird changes that they did, just this league, 
They made these Warcry nodes a little different. They added a couple of little things here and there. The stance nodes. Oh, what about the stun and block recovery nodes? Whoa, what about that? Uh, like, this is dead for a reason. You know, that's what this video is about. Slam builds are dead. They've been dead for a while. You have to be playing another archetype, like a stat stacker, or I don't even know. Uh, you have to be a stat stacker or something else, an attribute stacker, uh, in order to make slams playable. In their current state, just as like a regular, all rare gear, regular old slammer build, Earth Shatter, Ground Slam, Sunder, what have you, they feel like trash to play. And Palstron, this video, it has, I mean, a lot of interesting takes about um, defense versus the ability to farm, basically suggesting that this is a good league as an example, that you don't need, your, your defenses should not take away from your speed and damage and the content that you're playing. There's certain content where it's a lot better to not be that tanky uh, and replace that tankiness with, for example, damage, movement speed, clear, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The problem is that slams don't have the ability to make those adjustments. You can't say, uh, I'm gonna change a couple of things on my skill tree to make my slam build clear the screen better. It's not, a, it's not a choice. There is no, there's not like AOE nodes down here. There's like two. And even if you put those in, you still have to slam every single pack and war cry every single pack. This isn't just a problem, I promise you, with Earth Shatter either. This is Sunder. All the slam builds are kind of the same in this way. Um, other notes, SC trade is a meme. So Palstron makes a, a point about there is some level of competition to generating currency in SC trade. And as somebody who works a full-time job, uh, I can say with a lot of confidence and deliberation that my level of experience in this game doesn't reflect in my ability to farm in this game at all because I am playing a bad build. I know that I'm playing a bad build. I am making a conscious choice to play for fun, quote unquote, for fun, um, and not optimize my farming strategy and instead just kind of do whatever I want and just try to have fun and take it easy. But the reality is making currency is a part of the game. It literally is baked in. It is a trading game. It's an economy simulator. You, you can't, I don't play solo self-found because I don't want to. I want to trade. I want to engage with trading. I want to um, buy items from other players that I would not be able to acquire myself. I don't have time to farm an ashes in solo self-found. I work full-time job. I can hardly play like an hour a day. I don't even play an hour a day anymore. I've already kind of burnt out. I'm like at 14 challenges done. Uh, I'll probably get all the challenges done. But the point is, SC trade is a meme because you can sit in your hideout and click on sextants or, I don't know, flip div cards or you can sit in your hideout and make money. Probably make a lot more money than whatever I do, which is just sometimes Alcango, sometimes Delve, sometimes I'll do a random unique map, sometimes I'll do a random Kirak mission, just no plan because I'm just, I don't want to think, I don't want to try hard. I don't want to, I don't want to, I already do that in my job and I have to think so much and I have to pay such close attention and I have to make sure that I'm quote unquote optimized play. Well, it feels more relevant for the real world. And in this fake world, I want to just not think. So that is why I'm making this video in part is that I wish that slam builds were at least good enough so that I didn't have to think. I wish that slam builds were because I know for a fact that if I was playing a bow build or a 
uh, ignite build, like any dot build, chaos dot, ignite, poison, whatever, I know that I wouldn't have to think as hard and I probably would just have a better experience because I would be getting more currency, you know? Um, and I think making money in a way is fun. It is fun to farm and it's fun to get currency. That's a part of what I loved about past ARPGs. I'm a long time Diablo two Stan and it's, it's sad to me that slams are not even in the competition. They're not even in, they're like in a whole separate race. It's like a, it, it's literally like, if you're playing a slam build, you are only playing for yourself. You're playing for your own speed at your own pace. But, you know, you're not going to farm things that are interesting and valuable to buy. If I want to buy a really good me megalomaniac, it costs 20 divines. It's really interesting. It's really cool. Maybe I can make a meme off meta build with it. The reality is that I actually, you have to farm in order to have fun, kind of, <laughs> which is shitty but it's true it's like you can't make off meta weird meme builds if you're broke you know um so let's do the balance suggestions let's just let's close this thing out i've already been rambling for a while um <sighs> accuracy requirement is omega dumb and cringe and this other part says how can you miss a huge aoe slam with two seconds of wind up um yeah, I mean, switching gears to balance, I think GGG, I, as pains me to say it, I don't think that they care all that much about slams because I think we are maybe 0.5% of the player base. I think if that, I was scrolling through this earlier and it is, it is staggering. I think the highest is, so the highest are all builds that are playing a slam build quote unquote a slam gym attack gym you know whatever but they're not actually playing it as a slam build because they're not using war cries they're not spending any time on this bottom left of the tree so the people who are actually like me like earth shatter players who are actually shouting yelling hitting the buttons you know i think there's I mean, there may be like a thousand of us, <laughs> like it is an extremely small number. And the reason is because I just stated, it's just not practical. It's not meta. It's not. And I don't even want it to be meta. I don't need it to be meta. What I need it to be is playable. I just want it to be playable. Um, if you have a two second wind up, if I hit all of my war cries, whatever and then I slam and then I have a, another war cry to blow up my earth shatter spikes it's so dumb that this bottom left side of the tree you have to invest in accuracy you literally have to like get it in your suffixes you have to squeeze it into your jewelry and your gloves or you have to you know find somewhere on the tree that has points for it except that there are no points there's like one three cluster node of accuracy. The point is that it's super dumb that bow builds, it's a lot more accessible to get accuracy because you have dexterity, right? And you would think that life from strength is like a good trade-off. Well, it's not. It's not. And it's not even close. And it's frustrating to me that I have to go resolute technique with this archetype because it's already so bad. Do you really think that I'm going to actually have enough points in my skill tree and room in my gear with all of the other things that I've got to account for. Do I really have the the space to add crit multi? Do I really do you really think that 50% more damage some of the time is is going to save this archetype? It's not. It's not. Just give us like a little bit, a little bit more. So rebalance warcry speed and cooldown recovery. This is a no-brainer. The only reason that my war cries look anything like this is because I had to invest like 20 points in the skill tree in order to make it cool, less cooldown dependent. I mean, look at all this. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six with the mastery. I mean, it's, in, it's insane the number of points in the skill tree 
that I need to invest in order for War Cries to feel smooth. I mean, imagine we have to compare everything. You have to align up everything and indent everything based on the current meta builds. So a bow build or a frost blink ignite build or whatever, some kind of ignite build, a maw mischief build, I don't know. Something where you just go and you click a button and you're on to the next pack. You click one button, you're on to the next pack. This, if I take away all these points in the skill tree and try to, let's say, invest them in a cluster that gives me damage or something, it is going to feel unplayably bad because these war cries are going to take like a full second. Like, blah, then you run to the next pack. Then you hit, blah. It's, it takes so long. There's so much friction. Um, so rebalance to cooldown recovery. I know that General's Cry is a really strong build, so maybe you make an adjustment to that if you do that. But War Cry speed and the War Cry cooldown should be like way, way better and smoother by default. Rebalance the skill tree and mastery stuff again. So there was a very, very minor, almost negligible buff for this league for these nodes down here. I think that they gave some of these like a, f a few percentage points more cooldown and buff and whatever, right? These were a little bit worse, but it's pretty freaking negligible, uh, relatively speaking. These notes are just bad. They're just not very good. Um, these nodes, they're just not very good. They don't give you anything that's valuable in SC trade. They don't give you speed. They don't give you damage. They just give you some, it just feels mandatory. It just feels like you have to take them if you're going to play this archetype. Um, rebounds Fortify, again, this archetype is not tanky. It's just not. It dies. It's actually like freaking paper half the time. I have 5.5k. I think I'm at like 81 all res, maybe 82. It's paper. It just dies all the time. And I think part of that is the game, the state of the game in softcore now. And, you know... I, I can't fully explain it, but rebounds four to five. Please give us the damage reduction on the bottom left side of the tree that we deserve and maybe, maybe make something for the all resistance for the elemental damage reduction junkies. Please give us something that's at least remotely comparable to spell suppression because these just the builds are not tanky. They're just not. They're just not. Um, we already talked about extra requirement. I don't know why that's listed twice. Whoops, what did I do? Um, and then more damage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this build, I'm pretty sure from a cost standpoint, this is very inexpensive simply because no one plays these builds. So if you want to buy a very slow hitting weapon, they're actually kind of inexpensive. You know, you can make something that does 1.5, 2 million damage for really, really cheap. But the unfortunate truth, as I've been mentioning this whole time, is that the staggering amount of uh, speed and efficiency and comparative damage that other builds are doing, it, it doesn't matter that this build is cheap. It's cheap because it's bad. Um, so I don't know if they should revert Seismic Cry. I really don't. I kind of feel like maybe <sighs> there's got to be some other way of doing this, right? Um, if you just give slam builds more damage, none of them are going to use war cries. They're just going to go attack speed and crit scaling, and then they're going to pick better ascendancies and be on the other side of the tree with a ton of attack speed and cheese out damage that way. You can't just give a skill gem more damage. And I get that. I get that. But... You have to find a way to make these skill points more valuable, and you have to find a way to make the archetype compete from a damage standpoint. Because even the crazy thing is that even if this build, let's say it had twice as much damage, specifically you hit war cries, you hit earth shatter, you slam things, let's say it gives it is just two times damage. I am doing 1.5 mil right now, I'm suddenly doing three mil. That damage and delivering that damage to bosses, to really in-game content like Delhi, like Simulacrums, delivering that damage is a nightmare compared to other builds. So it doesn't matter 
by comparison, that if that's more damage than like some poison builds doing, it, it doesn't matter because the archetype is twice as hard to play and twice as likely to die. And, you know, so um, all that to say, the whole reason I really did this video is because the Palstron video kind of sparked some thought in that I, I ask myself, why am I playing this game? Why am I playing a slam build? Do I, am I enjoying how inefficient and slow my farming is? Um, where the price of divines is like going further and further out of my reach. Um, and am I, you know, I, am I frustrated to the point of like switching builds or, you know, playing a different game? Cause the reality is I actually did. I want to play earth shatter. I don't have to, I don't want to play a poison build, a bow build. I don't want to, I don't want to play lightning arrow. I don't want to. I want to play slams, but it feels so bad when this reality of making money is a competitive part of the game. It literally is a, is a part of the part of the fun and part of the competition. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not having fun <laughs> with my slam build. I'm just not. I'm not having fun Alcan going T16s and, and doing the T16 in twice the time or three times the amount of time that some zoomer build is doing, you know, with my no, with my zero extra quant and my zero whatever. And, uh, yeah, so it feels bad. It just feels bad. So I guess the, the rant conclusion here to finally conclude it after what's been a, <laughs> a long video, uh, is that GGG, I know you don't give a shit about me. You don't care about my enjoyment and my fun. I can appreciate that. You're a big company. You got big fish to fry. You got a whole new POE2 coming out. You got new leagues, new league content. You got to keep up. There's a, there's a ton of deadlines you got to meet. So one random guy on YouTube, not going to change your mind. But I will just say this. I can't play slams next league if you don't change them or buff them or make any improvements to them. I just can't. I can't do it to myself. And it's sad. It's sad to see an archetype die. It is. Because you put so much work and investment into this GGG. You really did. You you tried your heart out to make Warcry Slam build a thing. And they're dead. They're dead. So if you want to revive this part of the tree at all, you got to figure it out. You got to make some changes. And I don't know all the answers. I don't know how to tell you how to balance this game. It's a big, complicated game. I get it. But you got to figure it out because it's sad. It's sad for a slammy boy like me. So to all you slam guys out there that actually listen to this whole video, respect. Uh, big respect. And um, yeah, you know, respect to this game. Because I mean, I still love this game. I do. I still love this game. And uh, I still love my Earth Shatter Slam build, even if it's F tier. Um, I still enjoy it. So, okay, Whew. man, that was a marathon. Bye.